Mindset Michelle TV show. We're so super, super excited to have you joining us again today. And we have an extra, extra special treat for you today. We have some, not just one, which is our normal thing on the show, but we have two special guests and special the entertainment industry. So as we've been looking at all of these episodes around what does it take to create a mindset for success, I'm sure you'll agree that as a performer, you have an extra special you know, insight into what does that mean for creating a mindset for success when you're always on and whatever you're thinking and feeling, you can't kind of have front and centre when you're performing. But today's guests come all the way from alligator land in Florida. <laughs> so please welcome Anthony and Stacey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so wonderful to have you on the show today. And Thank you. I, I can't even begin to do justice to the wide range of um, talents and skills that they have. So I'll hand over to you, Anthony and Stacey. Please explain to everybody how you came to be passionate and doing what you're doing and, and what is it that is so passionate for you in, in what you do as an entertainers? Mm. Well, we both grew up as dancers um, and we wound up with dance careers. So ultimately, we are famous dancers. <laughs> Specifically, I'm known for tap. Uh, Stacy is known for tap and musical acro theater, and musical acro, theater. <laughs> and when you're in that kind of life, you have to have a lot of confidence, but not too much. You have to have a lot of determination. You could never give up. And you need to believe in yourself and lift others up around you rather than put them down, especially if you're going to be a teacher, a mentor, and someone who is visible in the community. It's a tight community. It's a close circle. Some of your Australian listeners may know the name Tap Dogs. I am the first American to get a standing role in the show Tap Dogs. And Stacy is best friends with some of the characters from Sesame Street. We... Both from the live show. From the live show. <laughs> from the live show. We both on our own eventually had some health issues. And then we both on our own started to discover how food drastically was affecting our health. We came together and then eventually wrote a book together called Food is a Prescription mm -hmm. and about the mindset you need to help yourself yeah. and what it takes to be. You know, an the healthiest self. Your healthy itself <laughs> and an advocate for your healthy itself mm -hmm. and for the best version of yourself. Wow, what what a wonderful um, description of what encompasses <laughs> two very incredible careers there. It's me. So thank you for um, uh, kind of positioning it as well. People here do know about Sesame Street and Tap Dogs, so yeah. mm -hmm. um, the stage musical, all um, Groucho and the other <laughs> characters on TV. Many people around the world have grown up <laughs> with Sesame Street and Tap Dogs, funnily enough. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I also hear about the... Um, the athleticism as a professional dancer, you're, you're both in very different areas. And that later in life realisation around the importance of food as part of that keeping the body as a machine going for those, those rigours of dancing. Um, I'll ask you, and, and you can answer jointly or um, individually, with, with these careers where you're kind of always on and your body is your machine to perform, et cetera, what then is your definition of success? What does success mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> we ask each other we this ask, all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> because it changes, it evolves, and, and as it should evolve as you evolve as a person. Um, I think for me, success, definitely I started looking at it differently after I did have to change my diet. Um Part of my personal success every day is if I haven't gotten contaminated in some way or another that makes me sick. Um, so that's definitely part of how I feel successful on a daily basis. Um, but really, it's I think it also encompasses helping other people, you know, and, and making sure that you can help them to live their best lives like that definitely factors into success. What seeing you? yourself being 
I know this this word is a controversial word all of a sudden, being woke, being <laughs> aware of what's good for you, what's not good for you, what lies are around you, what universe you create for yourself, you know, treating others the way you'd like to be treated, being kind to yourself and others. Six, like and, and, and what Stacy said, success is an evolving thing. Depends on what you're going through at any moment. Making sure you get up in the morning, not giving up, looking towards your future and being present in the moment and not, you know, it's, it's okay if you make mistakes and not living those mistakes, but seeing those mistakes and making different choices based on what you've learned from those mistakes or different choices from other successes that compound each other and just give you a more positive outlook on life so that you could be the best version of yourself and help other people do that for themselves. Yeah, I think when something that could be perceived as negative happens to you, if you can sort of manipulate that and mm. change that into finding something positive, that could be also defined as success. Yeah, and and with that, you know, my my mom just got an, oh, an yeah. injury and when her and I were talking about it I had sent her a video and the video talks about um, that pain and suffering and just because you're in pain it doesn't mean you have to suffer right so find ways out of the box that separate yeah to separate and find ways out of the box that sometimes you find yourself in even though you don't necessarily want to be there and, and what perfect, thank you, fabulous answers about what is success for people <laughs> that actually, because of what you do, your life can change in such a moment, you know, twisting your ankle the wrong way or, or landing awkwardly or any of those sorts of things can be the difference in that second, in that millisecond between carrying on with a performance or a show for a season and then needing to take care of your physical body. So... I think it's wonderful to hear people with um, such immediacy about success changes in the moment. It means different things. And I hear from what you're saying about your mum, and I hope that her um, illness and her injury recovers very soon. But Thank you. I will tell you said that. <laughs> yeah, lots of good wishes from Australia. <laughs> um, and... and um, that that definition then or distinction between in that immediacy of the moment going, oh, yes, I'm in pain, but what's funny about this or, you know, how, how can I kind of shift my attention from, yes, I'm in excruciating pain, but I don't want to be suffering through that pain. And, and there's exactly. many examples, extreme examples, um, which we don't need to go into, but it's a good example, again, of that mindset and nicely segues into with your very different and, and incredible backgrounds and experiences, what sort of tips would you share for everyday people as teachers, as mentors? I know that you're training people to kind of bring out the inner dancer in themselves in any moment, but how can something like that, that like the dancing or the movement, help create that mindset for success? One thing that I find myself saying to students often is whether you think that you can, or whether you think that you can't, you are correct, which is, you know, a common quote you've, he you've heard before, but is also really true. Another thing that I found interesting while we were writing the book, mm -hmm. we had spoken to a friend of mine from high school, and he had expressed the fact that, you know, sometimes if you're not happy, smile, because just the act of smiling can make you happy, make you happy or remind you of that happiness. So, I mean, there's lots of tricks every day that not beating yourself up if yeah. you have like a little bit of a setback you know that's that's huge oh. we are human and we are set up to make mistakes that's just what our basic yeah and you don't have to is. Be, you don't have to be <laughs> sorry about this mistake about those mistakes i constantly hear kids or dancers or students or whoever we're working with sorry 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 i'm like well you're not here to be sorry or you're, already know or already know <laughs> you're here to learn yeah. something new so i actually when i'm putting it on my arm this is we don't do sorry here to remind myself and others that if you are going to be sorry understand the more deep meaning of the word and what energy that creates between people and not just throwing the word around and and saying sorry because the same way smiling could make you feel happy saying sorry all the time 
could puts you in a put, place. Could, could be a blow to your confidence or to make you feel like you've done something wrong when you really haven't. You're just mm -hmm. going through the learning, learning process, process. Yeah. and going through a learning process shouldn't be a blow to your confidence. It should really build you up. And if you have good teachers or good mentors around you, that'll be part of the process. It takes at least three times, if not more, of re repetition to even start to, to understand change something. a habit. Sure, to change a habit. And if we're going to segue into like changing your habits as far as food is concerned, or anything, it's it's it takes a while, and it's very difficult, you know. And if you don't succeed the first time, you have a tendency to be like, oh, I can't ah, I'm going to give it. it up, but don't give up. <laughs> you know, collect, collect you just knowledge. Just got to keep at it. Stay at it. Don't yes. be sorry. Just keep going. Yes, collect knowledge. <laughs> be patient with yourself that is okay i really love this focus that you guys have on um as teachers and you're, you're constantly around people that are learning and there's this insights that you have into the use of the word sorry and and kind of the mindset which is really fascinating the mindset around the word sorry and and how not to even use that word if, if i always use um in a similar way when um, children are learning to walk, you don't get the kid. The kid doesn't say, sorry, I fell over every two seconds. And right. it's a great, right. great example of if you as an adult are learning new dance steps or changing your food habits, then you're not going to say sorry when you accidentally, you know, ate something with sugar in it, even though you're trying to right. cut out sugars. You're just going to sure. keep going. But we're trained as adults to keep saying sorry to everything, aren't we? Yes. yes, yes. And I'll tell 100%. you, even just a little simple one, when you bump into someone, you say, sorry, I started saying, pardon me. Yeah. Sorry Excuse would usually, me. you know, not advance the conversation. Pardon me allowed for an entry point into conversations with people that was new and unexpected. So I really enjoyed learning that for myself when I started in, in um, changing, changing that or putting that into my life, <laughs> you know, applying it on an everyday basis. My, my mum and um, my family background is very English and Scottish. And um, if she couldn't hear something, she would say, pardon me. She would never say, sorry, sorry, which is, I say sorry, because I've grown up here in Australia. But that that British way was, you know, pardon. I, I didn't quite hear that. Or, you know, like we're knocking somebody in the streets, pardon me is, you know, not saying sorry because it was an accident, but um, pardon me. And what a lovely way of reframing it so that there's more conversations. I, I, I really love this um, idea about not beating yourself up as you're learning. So what sorts of things do you both do? Because you're, you're constantly learning new dance steps, being in new cities and having new environments and new types of people, different types of people to deal with. What do you do when you see perhaps um, not as supportive patterns or behaviours in yourself, to kind of catch yourself and go, okay, let me reframe that. Let me change my mindset. What sorts of things do you do? I put tattoos all over my body. <laughs> <all over. laughs> we help each other. We, we, we remind each other. Stacy's very good at, if I'm struggling with that, using my words to point things out to me so that it's familiar verbiage. It's something that I understand because it's something I say. I think that's a really uh, helpful thing. It is easier to see things like that in other people than it is to see, see it in yourself. yourself sometimes. Absolutely. You know, and I think a lot of times you may not notice it or recognize it in the moment, mm -hmm. but you come back to it when you're just kind of by yourself thinking of things and you're like, oh. I should have really said, or I could have handled it like this, or I could, you know, and so what, being really self-reflective, oh, I think. I was going to say reflection and, yeah. reflection and some self-meditation, right? quiet moments. And when I use the word meditation, you know, some people, oh, you have to clear your mind and think of a blank white piece of paper. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just away from technology and noise and interruption and just sitting quietly for a couple of moments with yourself each day and the, whatever that means for you whatever that means for you and when 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 i guess quiet to mind kind of for me means not having all the other noise around so that i can hear my own self 
And when there's no distractions or less distractions or without that other input, the thing that really your soul wants to say to you becomes a little bit more prevalent because you have an opportunity to hear it. Yeah. I really love that. Listening to what your soul wants to say to you. What a beautiful yeah. way of expressing it, Anthony. Really, really lovely. And that whole, you're both talking about taking that reflective time out. Um, I love the, the um, pointing out about the reflection because you don't always see things in yourself. So having somebody else to use your, your words and your language so you can see it reflected back to you. Um, and and it, that, that's why that example about the young kids learning how to walk, I think is such a great example because people can relate to it without it being directly about them. And, and it, it's something that they can kind of reflect on. Well, do I use that same language when I'm talking to myself? when I'm changing my food habits, when I'm learning new dances or doing any of these different activities for the first time, do I have that childlike self-talk? And when I'm reflecting on it, do I use childlike self-talk or am I beating myself up and then just becoming more aware of that is so, so important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I have a feel. you know, we all are harder on ourselves than we are mm. on other people. And both of us notice it in each other, you know, like just a simple, oh, what a dumb, how dumb was that? No, that wasn't dumb. You know what I mean? Like, you're, I can need so to have some patience with myself and yeah. think through it. Before judging ourselves, we should have some more patience and think through things yeah. instead of having that snap reaction or, or, you know, we all get frustrated, but sometimes seeing that frustration in ourself is what allows us to escape that frustration. But if you can't see the frustration, then you get trapped in the prison of your own mind. And that's what you want to avoid happening. And, and you both, with, with the type of work that you do, you both, you, you know, your pressure and your immediacy is around, here's a new dance, now learn it in that two seconds that I showed it to you and master it in the next three seconds, please. So there can be a little bit of frustration with yourself and with the, the choreographer or with, with whoever you're learning the, the steps or the, the new food habits from. What do you do to sort of recognise that, oh, yeah, I'm getting a bit frustrated with myself, with them, and come back to that patience and that being um, kinder to yourself? Make a joke. Crack a joke. <laughs> do something silly. I was going to say go back over it. <laughs> Yeah. Start, you know, Stop especially choreography, over. right? Sure. So like just go back and just go slow. Slow down. And be methodical. Make you know, because it does help you find where you made the mistake. Sure. How to change it for the future so that you don't make that mistake again. And then you can go back and, and redo it. And sure. And make that's the, for anything in life, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, make the make the steps a little bit smaller. Sometimes you get frustrated because you make these steps so big, like step getting from step A to B to C. You make the steps so big that you're looking at the end point and you're not there yet and you're getting frustrated. I'm not there. Okay, you're not supposed to be there yet. Make the step. You can't get to X without doing a, all the, a, right, a, or everything else before it. <laughs> and this instant gratification yeah. thing that we experience now around us all the time, you know, that could be, that could be a lot of extra pressure. Or like like her, like Stacy and I speak about, it's like we have these tools around us all the time, social media tools, and you know you have to make sure that if you're allowing these things into your life and into your space, that you are the one who is controlling, controlling the tool, and the tool isn't controlling you because then you become the tool, and that's never good for your progress or you know, well you know. Advancement, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, consciousness, and and I said the word before. I can't think of it. Yeah, it, that's wonderful. Your soul, your soul is um, sure. what I think we're talking sure. about. So, what do you specifically do? And these are great examples. Thank you, guys. These are wonderful, real, really relatable examples. What do you do if you recognise that you're on your phone too much? Because obviously, booking the next gig and following up with promoters, etc. So, how do you manage? Okay, I, I need some self-reflection time now. I need to cut it out and just say no for a bit. <laughs> well, you need to be aware of your time and how you're using your time. And actually, I have an Apple phone, right? So 
it tells me what my screen time is. And I could look back at the week. What, what was my screen? Oh, my screen time was up 12% this week. Oh, well, let me go look why. Oh, it's not because I'm doing things that aren't productive or aren't um, promoting where I'm trying to be in life. It's because I took a couple extra rides and my phone was on in the car and it was used as my GPS. Okay, so great. But if my usage is up a lot and it's like, oh, I'm scrolling to TikTok, I'm just killing time. I'm not, you know, and it's not serving me then I need to reevaluate. Like right now I'm going through all, you know, Elon just bought Twitter, right? So I haven't been on Twitter, I haven't used it a lot. So now I'm looking at it and I went and I went, who am I following? What is my feed all about? I'm gonna take the time instead of just mindlessly going through my feed and look at every single person I'm following and reevaluate, should I be following them? How does it serve me? What is it doing for my life? What, what, what mindset is it putting me in? Are, are some of these things starting to lean to a negative attitude and I didn't see it because it happened slowly? Well, those people need to come out of the feed and I need to reevaluate and spend some time deciding how I build the universe that's around me. You just agree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fabulous. And, and, and I, I really hear you about um, that, that um, uh, going through your connections and going through what you're allowing into your space mm -hmm. and into your mind and into your mindset, which you might not necessarily be as conscious of or as aware of until something like what's happened recently with the Twitter and um, other social media areas where people are then reevaluating, well, what am I doing and how am I using it? I heard an, um, an expression in an American show the other day that I hadn't heard before, but it was called doom scrolling. And it was this act of just scrolling through all the headlines. And it was because most of the headlines are doom and gloom sort of thing. Um, wow. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to go look that up now because neither like one of us have news. heard that yet. <laughs> sounds like watching news. <laughs> doom, sc yeah. doom scrolling. CNN, yeah. MSNBC, yeah. Fox News. That's, that's it, doom scrolling. <laughs> I, and, and it was amazing because when I heard that term, I thought, oh, yeah, are people aware that when they're looking through these feeds of whatever it is, that it is this is the end of the world because of this or because of that or because of whatever, and that that mindset is what they're programming in about that fear and anxiety about what's well, yeah. happening. When if yeah, they, like, very... oh, I was I, just going to say if they, if they stopped for a second, turn it off and then looked around their environment and went, I have a roof, I have clothes, I have food. I'm actually doing really <laughs> Right, living in the moment. <laughs> Absolutely, living in the moment. But it, you also reminded me of something recently that's come up again. It's like, what is on that? What is that? What is? What are you scrolling through? If you look at how apps are built in some countries, they're very different experiences, like the people than, like, others. than others. When you are, I mean, again, we'll, we'll call it... Um, TikTok, I don't know what else to call no, it. We'll just... call it InstaTalk. You know, in in, Ch in China where the app is made, when they're feeding of when they're feeding information to the children, they feed them science and education <laughs> and positive information. And in other countries, in other countries <laughs> they're feeding them not so not great that. stuff. Distractions, <laughs> distractions, and kids just dancing on to and, and it's just it's it's people know. It's like it's like the street gang thing. Okay. It's like the street gang thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, there there was a documentary. It can be used for positive. It can be. It can be used for, for negative. negative, and it's it, it's it's a tricky. That's a whole other conversation. It's a tricky conversation. It, it is, and and I think perhaps you, you you're raising something really important that um, people are becoming more aware of the fact that media is in different forms is being used as a control factor. But all you need to do is look at the different world wars and understand how different countries use social media for propaganda, sure. et cetera. Propaganda, so absolutely. What, what you're talking about there is very much that. But we have digressed a little bit away from yes. uh, <laughs> creating a positive mindset. But I think these are really important points because even this is on social media. So people, again, choosing what are they allowing into their mindset? And, and it may not be as sexy and create as much of an adrenaline rush watching something like this, but you will learn more tools and techniques about how to take care and be kind to yourself than getting the latest, you know, doom and gloom headlines and Absolutely. drama, et cetera. So if people do want to catch up with you, and especially for all the viewers in the States that may want to come and watch your shows. Um, what's the best way of contacting or connecting with you, Anthony and Stacey? 
Now, we are all over social media, but you can come to our website. Our website for our food is Loca, like our last name, Locascio, L-O-C-A, Loca Foods, Inc. Dot com. And for dance, it's taplifecompany.com. And the same names on Instagram and on Facebook. Twitter. Yes. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. We're on we're on all the socials. Um, we send out positive things though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, food and tap dance. What where can you go wrong? Sure. Yeah, and then through through there well, you can send us does, private messages and stuff and we'll get back to you. Anthony does is it tap dance or food on TikTok? On TikTok I do. <laughs> tap dance or food. Because sometimes it's tap dance and, and sometimes, sometimes it's, it's food. food. On today's episode <laughs> of Tap Dance or Food. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you can tune in and go. Is it tap dance today or is it food today? <laughs> if, if you come to TikTok for that, uh, for that, you could just look up my name, Anthony Locascio. Oh, fabulous! And one of my favorite questions to ask guests, and and, and I, I will probably get you to answer separately. But if you were to go and ask your younger selves what advice you might give to them, what would you say? What would you say to your younger self? I think we might both say the same thing. What are you going to say? Save more money. Save more money. <laughs> Save more money. And Put it away. Put it away. Put it away. Be, be, be very aware who your, who your group of friends and mentors are. Because when we're younger, our friends just kind of become the people that are around us. And then eventually you, know, you find out that maybe you're only friends because of your proximity. Well, yeah. And really, we throw the word friend around too easy when we're younger. We really just have acquaintances when we're younger. And if we take the time, we'll pick from our acquaintances who our real friends are. Wow, what, what profound and very different views again. Um, you reminded me of the whole rich dad, poor dad thing about, um, you know, choosing, you had your biological dad, but then also choosing a dad that's a bit more of a mentor or an inspiration for something that you might want to do. And it, yes. I think it's an important insight, um, not just for when you're younger, but as you get older and, and have a career, um, being aware of who you have as your close inner circle and having mm. lots of colleagues, but having some real friends that um, are the people that you um, really connect into and, and want to work with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's good to have a safe zone, but not a safe zone of like-minded people, a safe zone where you know that the people that you're closest to can be open and have good conversations and different points of view. You don't all have to agree, but it's a good idea to be able to listen to each other and develop ideas rather than just to be stuck in some box because that's where you were put earlier in life. Yeah. yeah. That's where you came from. Yeah. I, I can't came. imagine you in any box, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because <laughs> people keep wanting to put me in a box and I'm like, uh, uh. well, it, it's been such an incredible journey. Um, you know, thinking about if you think you can or if you think you can't, then Eva is correct and smiling and, and looking up is the other part of that. If you smile and also look, look, look up, it releases the oxytocin in your brain, which is the happy um, chemicals. It's like when you exercise, oxytocin gets released when you smile and look up. And I love the insights you shared today around sorry and, and pardon me as a different way of reframing that. And in a very real in the moment, you know, telling jokes and, and <laughs> being silly to kind of break that pattern so that you can build some more of those new happier patterns as you create those friends around you with better money habits. So thank you again. What an incredible and amazing show and journey we've been on. Thank you, Anthony and Stacey, for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. And to all the viewers out there, thank you again for watching. It's because of you that we get to enjoy such incredible and amazing people like Anthony and Stacey. But for now, from my heart to your heart, be great. Be fabulous and be you. Fair dinkum.